Hello everyone, I'm Priyam and I welcome you to FACE. You're currently watching the 6th episode of the Anybody Can Code series. To view the previous and the next episodes, or to start from the very beginning, check the links in the description below. In the previous episode, we began learning about conditional statements in C. We understood how the if statement works and also wrote a program to find a leap year using an if else ladder. In this episode, we will be discussing nested if, relational operators, logical operators and ternary operators. So let's begin by understanding nested if. Most of you would have watched the movie Inception. In the movie, the characters see their dreams inside their dreams. Similarly, nested if is just a programmer using an if statement inside another if statement. Fortunately, nested if is a concept which is much easier to understand than the movie. Recall that in the previous episode, I said that if statement has two parts, the condition and the block of code. If the condition is satisfied, then the block of code contained in the curly brackets gets executed. Otherwise, it doesn't. If this block of code happens to be another if statement, then we call it a nested if. This is one of the ways in which programmers impose multiple conditions in one single time. Let's quickly write a code to understand the nested if condition. Write a code to find the greatest of the three input numbers. Note that there are multiple ways in which we can write a code for this problem statement. For now, let's use the nested if condition. As usual, I'll begin with planning the code. First, I'll prompt a user and get the three input numbers. Then, I'll compare the first number with the second number. If the first number is greater than the second number, then for it to be the greatest, it must also be greater than the third number. Else, if the second number is greater than the first number, then for it to be the greatest, it must also be greater than the third number. I'll create this logic using the if else statements. Now let's get coding. I'll use the same online compiler. By now I'm quite comfortable with it. Uh, you can download a compiler and uh, install it in your computer or just like me, you can uh, use an online compiler. Anything works. So there are three input numbers. So I'll have to write percentage D three times. All of them are integers. So it's percentage D. With this, I have stored the input values in the variables that I declared. Now I'll use the conditional statements to find which among them is the greatest. I'll begin by checking whether the first number is greater than the second number or it's not. If it is, then I need to further check its relation with the third number.
if a is greater than b but lesser than c then c is obviously the greatest integer now we need to consider the case when a is less than b Now let's compile the code. So I'll check for some three random numbers. Let's say 32, 69, and 52. So obviously answer is 69. Code is working. Now let's check some unordinary numbers. So I'll uh, run it again. This time I'll add 0, uh, minus 15, and 5. Here, the answer should be 5. If it is 5, then our code is running correctly. Yes, it is. Now let's understand this code by understanding the flow of power through it. Once line 7 is powered, the condition in the if statement gets checked. If the value stored in variable A is greater than that in variable B, then the power flows through lines 9, 10, 11, and 12. After line 12, the power goes to line 14. As the condition in if statement was satisfied, the else statement fails. Thus the power jumps from line 14 to line 21. And the code ends. But if the value stored in variable B is greater than that in variable A, the if statement fails and the power jumps from line 7 to line 14. Then the fl power flows through line 16, 17, 18, and 19. Finally, line 21 gets powered, which ends the code. As you can see, it took us 22 lines to write such a simple code. Obviously, this much effort is unnecessary and is just a waste of time. So what is the alternative? A simpler way to code is to use the AND and OR operators instead of the nested if. Recall that in the previous episodes, we learned and used the arithmetic operators. They were plus, minus, multiply, divide, and modulo. We also use the equal to operator, which belongs to the group of assignment operators. Now we have to learn about two new groups of operators. These are the relationship or relational operators and logical operators. Let's begin with understanding the relational operators. We have already used the relational operators in the previous episodes. Even in the previous code, we use relational operators. Greater than and smaller than operators that we have used belong to the group of relational operators. Statements written with the relational operators give just two outputs, that is 0 or 1. Here 0 represents false and 1 represents true. In the code that we just wrote, we use the line if a greater than b. Here the condition is a statement which is using a relational operator. a greater than b can either be true or be false. Thus the argument of if, that is the condition, becomes either 1 or 0. Similarly to check whether the values stored in two variables are equal, we use the double equal to sign. If a equals to 6 and b equals to 6, then a double equal to b will be 1. Notice that we have used two equal to symbols. A single equal to belongs to the group of assignment operators, whereas double equal to along with greater than equal to or less than equal to belongs to the group of relation relational operators. So to summarize, we use relational operators to write the statements whose output is either true or false. We use these statements as conditions in the if statement. But what if there are multiple conditions? This is where the logical operator comes and helps us. And and OR operators belong to this group. Logical operators are used to connect or tie together two condition statements. Obviously, one means true and zero means false. Now let's understand the AND operator. As the name suggests, if both the statements on the left and the right are correct, 
then the AND operator returns 1. If one of the statement is incorrect or if both of them are, are, are wrong, then AND returns 0. Similarly, as the name suggests, OR re operator returns 1, even if one of the statement is correct. OR operator will return 0 only when both of the statements are incorrect. Let's have a final look at our operator table. I advise you to pause the video here and try to recall what each of them does. Now that we understand relational and logical operators, let's get coding. Here we have used the AND operator. If both the statements are true, that is A is greater than B and A is less than C, then the AND operator returns true. Thus if the condition is true, then the printf statement is executed. We repeat the same steps for the variable b. If the values stored in the variables a and b are in the greatest, then obviously the value will in the c will be the greatest. Now let's compile this code and see if it is working correctly. Again it's asking me to enter three numbers, I'll go with some random numbers. 26, minus 96 and uh, 13 it's giving me the correct answer. So our code is still working correctly. Using the AND operator, we were able to reduce a 22 line code into a 14 line code. That's a 36% reduction. Remember, the factor that differentiates a great coder from a good coder is their efficiency of code. That being say, said, we can still further reduce the code. To do so, we'll have to use a special type of operator called the ternary operator. Ternary operators might seem a little complex, but are actually very easy to use once you understand them. So let's quickly have a look at them. Here the condition statement is written using the relational and the logical operators. If the condition is true, then the first command gets executed. If the condition is false, then the second command gets executed. To help you understand this better, I'll write a small code using the ternary operator. In that, I'll find the greatest of the two input numbers. I will quickly make some changes to the code. Now it will take only two input values. Here, if a is greater than b, then the first printf statement is executed. If the condition fails, then the second printf statement is powered. Let's execute this in and check if our code is working properly. So I'll enter two numbers, uh, 25 and let's say 153. It's still working correctly. Now that you have understood the use of ternary operators, let's use it to further shorten our previous code. I'll be using a nested ternary operator, so please pay some extra attention to it. Also, instead of rewriting the printf statement like I have used right now, I'll just store the output in a variable and then print it at the end of the program. So I'll quickly modify the code so that it takes three input values.
I'll also add a storage variable. The storage variable will store the answer and then print it at the end. This will make my code much simpler. You'll see how I do it. Here, I have stored the largest integer in the variable called storage and then printed it. This is another way of using ternary operators. We could have also done this in our previous code. Now let's compile the code and check if it is working properly. Again, I'll put three numbers. Let's say 30, minus 68, and 1 or 12. So our code is still working correctly. Using the ternary operators, we were able to reduce the initial 22 line code to just a 10 line code. That's almost a 55% reduction of the code length. Some of you might be unable to understand the seventh line. Let me quickly walk you through it. Here the storage variable only stores the result. A is greater than B is our first condition. If it is true, then the power is transmitted to command one. Obviously, command one is a nested ternary operator. Let's understand what happens inside it. If the condition in command 1 is satisfied, that is, if a is greater than c, then the value to be stored in the variable called storage is a. This is because a is greater than both b and c. Thus the value in it is the greatest number. But the condition in the command 1 fails, that is, if c were greater than a, then the value stored in the variable called storage is c. Let's go back to condition 1. If condition 1 had failed, that is, b was greater than a, then the power would jump from condition statement to command2, completely ignoring command1. Command2 would then function like command1. I hope you have understood the use of ternary operators. With this, we have now come to an end of this very long episode. We have learned a lot and seen how we can solve one problem in three different ways. Some of you might feel that using nested if or just knowing how to use operators is enough. But sooner or later, you will realize that nothing that we teach in this ABC series is completely useless. Once you have gained a certain amount of proficiency in C programming, you will be able to come up with multiple ways to solve a problem and then select the best out of them. If you have understood the concepts taught in this episode, then you should be able to tackle problems like finding the smallest out of three numbers or even finding the middle number. I advise you to try coding these codes by yourself. Finally, I advise you to try writing a code to find the greatest of the four input numbers. I'll post the answer in the comments in case you are unable to do so. See you in the next episode. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe.